So we are all here for a very important reason this evening. I wanted to say a uh, few quick words uh, before we start. Words I think will be poignant, words I think that will be important, but nowhere near as important as what the uh, next group of uh, people have got to say. So, we have a little quiet in the room please. We flock in hundreds to the junction, guided to the next great function by a shepherd of the local arts, one who forever will hold in hearts, keen to love, keen to laugh, keen to learn and hone his craft, keen to bring whatever he could, never disliked or misunderstood, for never a star could itch so, hit such heights, his beacon guides a shining light, a blazing sun, but not a far one, a one that burned right here in Darwin. That one was for the herald of this venue, Mr. Johnny and And I'd like to now invite to the stage Stephen, Ramsey and Gary to say some really important words here about the future of these, these walls beside us. So a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen! Hello. Uh, as probably quite a few of you will know, uh, I'm Stephen Lindley, uh, Jonathan's, Jonathan's father. Yay! Hey, uh, yeah. yeah, he wasn't that big of you. Uh, what I'd just like to uh, start off with is, is a bit of um, uh, background information uh, to do with Sunbird and, and obviously uh, Jonathan as well. Um, in about 2013, 12-13, Jonathan decided uh, that he wanted to um, reinvigorate the Sunbird Records record label that I'd started at the back end of the 90s and it basically just fizzled out a bit. So, but he wanted to do it uh, with a, a big emphasis on design in terms of, in terms of the, uh, the artwork and promotional stuff. So um, he started off, he uh, worked with various local artists, uh, recorded some uh, albums, uh, produced all the covers, produced the albums as well. <laughs> um, but then came the point where he decided that it, these local artists needed to do a gig. So uh, at that time, as, as is the case still now, there were lots of places where bands could play in pubs. And, and the like. So he uh, approached one of the uh, venues, one of the pubs, and said we'd like to do a, a showcase of Sunbird Records uh, with several several acts on. And uh, so it was all okay, but then about two weeks, this is in uh, November 2015, but about two weeks before <coughs> the date, the venue suddenly got cold feet because they realised that these, uh, the acts that were on were, were uh, original material, uh, there were writers and performers, not cover bands, and basically they got cold feet, they said, oh, I'm not sure about this now. And then there was a, a quick rush around uh, by Johnson and, and, and some, of the, some of the artists to find a suitable venue. And we ended up uh, at the upstairs of um, what's now the Olive Bar, on uh, Belgrave Road, which is not ideal for a music venue, it's small and there are pillars in the way everywhere. <laughs> um, but it was a great night and a great success, but that uh, really convinced Jonathan that, that, the, uh, that Darwin really needed a, a proper music venue. And with uh, his various uh, collaborators at that time, uh, started looking around premises and um, somebody suggested this place which was uh, previously a bank had been partially knocked down inside and because it was going to be a pizza restaurant um, but he managed to secure the place on a lease and uh, in the summer of 2016 Sunbird Records opened um, now for the first few years uh, I think everything went fairly well then of course lockdown, mm. which uh, was the kiss of death for many small businesses and possibly venues and so forth. But thanks to some Arts Council funding, Sunbird managed to survive through that uh, and the time was well spent. Um, uh, 
sorting the place out, replacing replacing the toilets and the, uh, a lot of the the, uh, the, the infrastructure. Um, when COVID ended and uh, places could reopen, uh, unfortunately, uh, Jonathan became very ill and then spent probably about four or five months practically constantly in hospital. Uh, in that time, uh, the, uh, the the sort of nucleus of uh, people who were running uh, Sunbird kept the place going yeah, after, after it reopened. Uh, and uh, many times when I was at the hospital uh, visiting Jonathan, uh, he'd be on the phone to the run, they were checking on what we can do about this and do about that. Unfortunately, of course, as we all know, uh, he passed away in January, uh, which meant that um, what's going to happen to this place? So we decided that the, the the best possible thing was to keep the place all yeah. uh, in because it, it, it's a great place uh, for Darwin uh, from a musical point of view and, 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 and of course it was Jonathan's I know it sounds chronic but it was his vision, his dream mm. so we, you know, we've got to try as much as we can to keep the place going we've uh, managed through in the past six, seven months to uh, organise the place a bit better and particularly in the past maybe uh, two months, three months, we've had a, a serious look at how things are done here. And we've uh, restructured the way things are done. We've had plenty of help from the Music Venue Trust, who I'm sure you know are uh, proposing to, well not proposing, they're going to buy this place and then rent it back to Sunbird at a reduced rent, which would therefore mean there's more chance of Sunbird surviving all the ups and downs of trading what have you. Uh, we've had a lot of help from them, the Arts Council and the Blackburn and Darwin Council as well. Uh, the thing is, it's potentially now in a really, really strong position. Mm. However, what happens next? We've got a cost of living crisis. Uh, yeah. So, the, unfortunately, although everything else is really in place, finances are still precarious. So, you know, it's great that people you know, come out uh, and spend it at the bar and everything. It's the support that we need to keep this place running now is really down to punters, uh, people coming in and, and having a good time. So uh, that's the sort of history, if you like. The, the one thing I have forgotten, which I better just mention, is that there was, when Jonathan decided that this was the route he wanted to take, uh, by that time, the, with the various artists he was working with, and his, you know, uh, friends and colleagues, or whatever, um, he decided that it would be a, um, he realised that what he had found was what's called a neo tribe. Um, so, uh, and he used this in his uh, research work at Hudson University uh, for his PhD. And for, for probably about three months, this tribe were down here all the time. Uh, nights, weekends, all over the place, doing all the jobs and stuff. And that, as I say, became the basis of his uh, thesis that got him his PhD. And what, over the, the years since then, a lot of these people have, you know, have drifted away. Uh, you know, uh, they've got uh, jobs, uh, wives, girlfriends, children, all sorts of things. But what we are trying to do with tonight is to reconnect with these people and the general public as well to foster this idea of a neo tribe. People who are really keen on music, on, on the, uh, the the place that this has in the community. So, um, so yeah, so thank you very much for coming and uh, I hope you all jump on board. If you haven't met me before, that's me. So I'm going to talk about a few things that we've got, some of the exciting things, some of the hard things, the difficult things we've got, that we've got going on. General expense of like running the venue and stuff, some things like ticket prices and stuff like that. We do plan on doing a bunch of things like that and I'm going to get to that right now. But first, the first, sorry. So the first thing is, you've probably all heard about music venue properties and the music venue trust getting involved. Now, to expand on Stephen's point, 
Their idea is, we are one of nine venues up and down the country. One out of nine out of a thousand venues are on one of three, it's not in a city, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And, uh, especially say how shit the weather is up here. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So we jumped, uh, uh, me and, uh, me and uh, Derek, where we go. Uh, went down to London to fly the flag for some bird, we talked to um, some Tories, we talked to some uh, people getting involved and stuff like that. And they were very keen and now there's loads of uh, Tory backbenchers with some birds sitting <laughs> on the back of the phone, right the back. <laughs> Not so bad. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so the idea is now, we've just got backing now to more funding. It's from the likes of Amazon Music, um, Warner. Closer? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's got a bit more intimate. Okay. Um, yeah, we've got the likes of Amazon Music, we've got uh, Warner, we've got Sony, we've got Ed Sheeran. Yay! And uh, <laughs> now I don't know if he's coming down personally, but I like <laughs> to think he is. Yay! And uh, Tom Grennan, we've got like loads of big things like that. And all this is going to come through in February. We just have to get there. And the things we have to worry about is just like stuff like paying the expense for energy and you know, we pay every artist that comes and plays here. Every single one, DJs, bands and all of that. And we just need to keep going and with all your support, we're going to crack on and try our best. So yeah, and it's been a great turnout tonight. So if you keep this up, like, it'll be easy sailing. But um, the next thing I'm actually moving on to is, people have been asking me about it all night, new merch. Yay! So, <laughs> I was going to have a slide that had all the new merch on it. Only the red one! Just the red one! Just the, we've got, so it's better than just the red one. We've got four t-shirts. Um, I don't suppose someone can pass me one of the new t-shirts just behind the bar. Gary's legging it as fast as he can. We've got... They want the red ones. Just don't the bring, red the red one. bring the grey one. Don't listen to them. <laughs> anyway, we've got four. We've got new bits of merch. We've got four T-shirts with the new. Oh, he's bought, he's bought all of them. <laughs> the red one. So, as, as my beautiful model is here, we've got the front. Let me turn it around. We turn it around. How are you feeling, the fabric? There we go. Give him a spin. There we go. Hey. And there we go. It is 100% made from cotton. It's beautiful. It's great. You spin me right round, baby. Hey! Right like a record, baby. Hey. <laughs> it's not all of them. But um, anyway, we've got four t-shirts. We've got some crop tops for the girls. We've got some. We've got two hoodies. We've got crop tops for men as well. Sorry, <laughs> gender in it. We've got we've got two hoodies. Burgundy one and a black one, and we've got some mugs and things. You can talk to Marina, who told me to not introduce her as my mum. She is taking pre-orders, and for everyone here tonight, if you get a pre-order with her tonight, it's 10% off, and you don't have to pay for shipping, you have to come to the venue, so you save about barely five or six quid. So if you talk to her afterwards, she'll take some orders for you, and we'll get those red t-shirts for you as soon as possible. <laughs> so, if you, um, if you don't want to do it tonight, you can buy it off the website in about a week or so, we'll have that all set up, and it'll come straight to your door. The next thing to talk about is, so, some of you might not know him, and he's probably going to ignore me, but we have a big new member of our team who was coming to the frame last few months, called Sam, our bar manager. Give us a wave, Sam! There he is! And this man has done some beautiful things to that bar, including a cocktail list that has been doing exceptionally well over the last few weeks. We've got our coffee champion, Blake. She's been doing miraculous things with our new coffee machine. She might even make you a pumpkin spice latte if you ask her nicely. Um, and we're proud to have like a massive, massive range of non-alcoholic things for those of you that do Soptober for the next three days. Um, so yeah, we've got all that going on as well as the, the real meat and potatoes of this. We've got more future plans. We plan in the next six months to relaunch the label. We want everyone who's been involved with it in the past to be involved in it, the bands that have been on it to be, to do some more sick albums. We want some new bands on it to make more sick albums. Uh, we're going to redo all, we're going to reboot the YouTubes, we're going to make some, hopefully some sick music videos, some sick live streams, sick secret gigs up in the woods, probably in, in the Stevens horse box or something like that. <laughs> Again. 
you know, we'll be doing all this in the next few weeks, so please be in touch. If not, I'll be in touch with you and getting you down to do all that. But we're returning to that original vision where we can finally make this grassroots platform in this teeny tiny town of Darwin and push everyone up because there are some really sick musicians in this town and the world needs to know who the fuck you are. Yeah! Yeah! And that's I think everything from me. I will say, if you've got any questions for any of us, we might do a QA at the end. We'll see. Otherwise, just come and talk to us and throw a beer with us. Otherwise, introducing the man, the myth, the legend. Mr. Darwin on Thursday night himself, Gary Ward! Yay! Pumpkin spice latte? What the hell is that? <laughs> Delicious! Is it? We'll make it up. Jeez. Uh, right, well, uh, the other thing I just. The other thing is, um, we're going to do the QA. Uh, he's just made that up. We haven't found the QA at all. Do it! But if anybody does have any questions, then you can maybe come and have a chat to us afterwards. That might be the best thing. Okay, from me, I'm gonna, I've got quite a few notes, I've brought them down. Uh, I'm just going to do briefly about the music here. Um, at the moment we're doing four days a week, four days a week. Thursday night is the music club. Um, that's, that's mainly world folk groups, alternative, jazz, blues, uh, anything along that line. Um, coming up, uh, just, to show, uh, just to show a little bit about the eclectic nature of that as well. Next week we've got Who's It Listening, which is kind of psychedelic groove jazz uh, followed a little bit later on by Tom Metcalf and Ali Herman, which is flamenco. We've got a flamenco guitar player and flamenco dancer as well. Yeah. Completely eclectic, it could be anything on a Thursday night. Fridays is... Uh, thank you. Fridays is, uh, is the grassroots and emerging independent bands Rock, alternative, metal, punk. We've got a team, a dedicated team of bookers, and we also got now. We also got now a new list of, uh, of, of national contacts as well of people we're going to be sourcing and bringing in not only the best local emerging bands but also national touring bands as well. Uh, so watch this space Friday evenings. Uh, we're going to continue with that very Saturday night. Uh, he's, he's been traditionally for a while now, the DJ night, that is going to continue for now. This may change, you know, we might, we might have the odd night where we get something else on, but there's a general rule, uh, DJ nights, house music, techno, drum and bass, disco, hip hop, uh, jazz funk. We've got, again, a very dedicated team of bookers uh, and we're putting together some amazing DJ nights throughout the year, throughout the rest of this year and next year as well. Uh, so check them. I'm basically talking about the eclectic nature of the programming that we're going to be doing. We're trying to we're trying to put something on for for, for, for most people in the community, uh, and uh, that's that's what we're aiming for. Sundays, talking of the community. Sundays we've been doing the community fairs. We've done youth showcases. We have the regular community dog community drum circle. Uh, we even do some karaoke as well. Sundays again. Bit of a community day, but we're open for suggestions. If anybody's got a school of music and want to do some gigs in here, then you know we're open for suggestions on on those uh, on those Sunday afternoon sessions. We've got plenty of uh, plenty of those spare coming up. Okay, that's it for the music. Basically, we've got now. <laughs> we've got now a great team. Uh, not just people running, but also people booking acts for us, and all part of the team now. It's something that we've needed for a long time, and we're getting there. It's getting really good. But that's only part of it, that's only half of it. And because, of course, we can't run a music venue if we don't get the people in, and we don't get money going over that bar. So, what we need, we need the community. We need to reach out to the community on this. We're bringing you the both the best of, uh, of, of music. There's four ways in which you can help. Four ways in which you can help the venue. Buy tickets. We don't do that many ticketed events at the moment. But when we do, you know, if you support, if you can show support for the venue, buy tickets for that. One of those, I'm going to do a quick plug now, is Charlie Clark on Tuesday the 29th of November. It's a Tuesday night. What else would you be doing on a Tuesday night? Check out Charlie Clark from Glasgow. Check him out. He's also in his band. He's actually got Francis from Teenage uh, Fan Club and Paul Wilson from Snow Patrol. It's a bit of a star studded lineup Tuesday the 29th. The tickets are only a fiver. 
because of the contacts that we've got, Child has agreed to put us on his tour schedule on his national tour. You know, if we can support that one, that might be the first thing we can do. Do the thing, because most of our events, there's no, there's no choice to get in. It's like tonight, most of the time you can walk in for free. Buy a drink, buy somebody else a drink if you've got a drink. It just all helps us. Uh, these are just simple things. The other thing to do with your skins, you see all the stuff going out on the internet, give it a share. Give it a share on your social media platforms. It all helps because I know this, when I sat at home just clicking share, share all the time, it takes hours. I know how much difference it makes when two or three, two or three other people do that as well. And the amount of people see those posts just trebles. It really does make a difference. It's always appreciated. Even if you can't make the gig yourself, give us a share and help. That makes a big difference. Then finally, the other thing to get involved is the mailing list. The mailing list. We have cards. We have pens. They are situated at the back. What I'd like everyone to do, if possible, today, if you could write down your email address, we're going to go, I'm going to do the proper full email um, mailing list, and that's what we're going to do, that's what all the big venues do, uh, and all the other established venues do, and we're going to get on with that so that we can really vamp up the, uh, uh, the marketing and get out to more people. Uh, that's what we want to do. If you could do that, that would be great. You can also supply your email address on the website, and you can also scan the QR code on the posters. So there's the posters, whatever, just as you came in, there's the QR code there. Please take time to read those uh, as well, please. I think that is pretty much your lot from me. Um, Cheers, Gary! One second. So basically, we need you. Thanks very much, thanks for listening.